Hello, it's Shari here today, and I am going to be showing you how I made this super fun magic iris card inspired by the Little Mermaid in Ariel's Grotto. So I had this great idea to try this, and it's going to use a lot of stamps. And in some cases, it's only one stamp from each set, but I thought I'd show you all the stamp sets I used. So first I have Life is Good with the Little Crab. I have Ahoy Matey using the treasure chest and some of the coins there. Of course I have mermaid for you so that I have my mermaid and some of the little fish. I also used a little ink bottle from Love Letters and I didn't stamp the word ink so it just looks like a cool little vase or bottle. I used some of the fish and the seaweed elements from You Are Sublime. I used the anchor from Smooth Sailing. I'm using this little clam with the pearl from Keep On Swimming. And then I'm actually going to use these little glasses from So Awesome. And then from Smart Cookie, I used the little diploma because I thought it looked like a scroll of paper. I'm going to use the little hat from Bicycle Built For You. And then this plan on it set, the school set, has some little books and I'm going to use those as well. Because they were sized perfectly for this. Um, the little fork and the knife from Party Animal. And then I'm also going to stamp out a couple of the music instruments and the sheet music. Now, I actually did not end up using every single one of these pieces. I didn't use the musical instruments. But I just thought it would be good to go ahead and stamp out all the things that I found that might be in Ariel's Grotto. And so I have them when I'm ready to assemble my little scene. So I'm going to start off by coloring my mermaid here. I'm just using some reds, doing a little bit of shading on her hair. Of course, her tail is a nice green. And in true Little Mermaid fashion, I've colored the rest of her little swimsuit to be that purple color. And then I'm just going in with some flesh tones with a little bit of shadow under her hair. For the crab, I'm actually using the same red colors that I use for her hair, but just a lot more of the darker. And I'm actually not going to show my coloring for all these pieces because it is a lot to color. And just use bright colors and use the colors that you have in your stash. Just going to go in with some yellow for the details on the treasure chest. And then I will go in with a darker yellow, kind of a more muddy yellow. And that's what I'm going to use for the coins. So I'm just adding a little shadow. And then I'm also going to use that yellow for the coins. And then I'll go in with an even darker one and give them just some slight shading. I'm not going to do too much shading on the treasure chest here. Keeping things very simple because this is a very busy card. It's going to have a lot of pieces. So I feel like the more simply they're colored, then it won't be as busy, but that's just the method I'm going with. <laughs> so a little more shading in the lid so you can tell that it's open. And then I'm coloring my anchor here. I colored it with a gray, but I thought I'd give it a little more color because I'm going to have a lot of gray going on with the background. So I added a blue, violet, purple. Now I'm going to color some of these sea elements with some bright colors. So I'm going to use some dark gray cardstock to create the grotto itself. So I wanted to be sure that all of the things inside were nice and brightly colored so that they stood out and it was a very dynamic card. So now that I have all of my pieces colored, I will use the dies to cut them all out. So that took a little bit of time because there's so many of them. Now to work on the iris. So I have the largest of the stitch squares. I've cut three pieces. And then for my iris, I'm going to cut three of the ring out of that same cardstock. This is the narwhal cardstock. I'm going to cut three of the sausage pieces, and this is cut from the teal color from Watercolor Wishes, the darker of the teals. And then my little connector pieces, I've just cut three of those from white. You're not going to see these, so you could just cut it out of some scrap cardstock. Now I'm going to take this flux capacitor piece, and I'm going to cut it out of one of my rings. So you only need to do this on one ring. 
Just line up the center with the center of the circle, hold it in place with some tape, and run it through the die cut machine. And it cuts these little slots that your sausages go into, your little petal pieces here. And I'm just going to hold them in place with a little bit of purple tape until I get the glue dots and this part of the magic iris assembled. So when you slide those in the slots, you're going to see that you twist them and they should line up perfectly with the ring. And that is why where I'm taping them in place. So the outside edge lines up with the outside of the ring and the inside with the inside. Now for the glue dots, you want to use the mini glue dots. These are the 3 16 size. And you're going to put one glue dot on each of these petal pieces right where that little X is that the die cuts. So I'm just picking those up with my craft knife, putting them right on the little X's. So you're going to have three glue dots, one on each little piece. You want to be sure to use glue dots. Liquid glue doesn't work. Big glue dots don't work. This is the size that you need. Now you can take another one of these rings that we cut. You're going to layer that on top, line it up, and you're going to stick that to those glue dots. So this is going to be held on there with those three dots that we just put on. Now that this is in place, you can remove that tape that was just holding them in place. You don't have to do the tape step, but I just find that it helps from the, keep the pieces from moving while you're doing this. Now we can connect the pieces together with the white connector pieces that are cut there. So I'm just going to put some tape runner from the little markings that the die created, which is a little hard to see on this dark gray cardstock. But I'm going to go straight out from the inside where those markings are to the outside of the ring. Then you take that curved end of the little connector piece and you line it up with the inside circle right where that adhesive is right where those marks are. Now you can flip it over and we're going to put our little handle. So you want to put it to the right of a connector. You can see there I just write it on my die so that I always remember. You're going to put adhesive just on that bottom part, not on the top that's going to hang off. And you can see that when this piece is cut there's a slight curve to that inside edge that's going to line up with the inside of this ring. And then of course you want it to the right of one of those white connectors. And then you're going to make a little V on the outside edge. So you're going to line it up there and then on the outside. So the left side of the handle wants to meet the right side of the connector. So now we're going to put adhesive on the rest of the connector piece. Then we're going to lay our third ring on top lining it up with the rings below. And then you're going to gently fold over these connectors, not too tight. You need to have a little bit of room so it will not completely reach the inside of the circle. It will fall short, but you don't want them too tight so that your mechanism has space to move. If it's too tight, they won't move. So now you can test it out, well, or you can fold these down first. <laughs> you fold these in so that it, you can't see those pieces when it's open. Don't glue them down, just fold them in. And then now you can test it and make sure that it turns. I always have to make sure I hold it in the right place when I'm testing it. It doesn't always move, but of course it's before you've glued it down. Now to create the grotto pieces. So we're going to be cutting up these three rectangles. So what I'm doing on this one is I'm finding the center. So I'm using my ruler that has the centering ruler on it. I'm making a mark where the center is and then I'm just going to use my t-square to draw a pencil line that denotes the center. Once I've found the center and I've drawn my two lines, I'm going to actually use the die to draw a little bit of a so the reason I'm using the die to draw this rather than the ring I've already cut is because the die has the little holes in it for you to poke the die cut piece out if it's stuck in there. And there's four of them. So you can line up those holes with the lines and have this perfectly centered. Also, the circle in the center is going to be a little bit smaller than the actual die cut center. 
So that's a good guide because what I want to cut out of the middle, I want to be smaller than that circle. I'm going to set that one aside for a minute. And then on another one of these squares, I'm going to trace the outside of my circle. Now I'm just eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be that perfect um, because we're going to draw an imperfect circle here. So you can see I'm drawing a squiggly line. I'm drawing it on the inside of that circle I just traced. That was just kind of my guide so that it was even all the way around. And once I've got that kind of sketched out the way I want it, I'm just going to cut it out with a craft knife. Now you could also use scissors, but I'm pretty handy with a craft knife and I can do this pretty quickly with the craft knife. So I'm just cutting out this kind of wonky, crazy circle that I sketched out here. And this is gonna be my topmost layer. So now I'm doing the same thing with the one that I traced the small circle and I'm tracing that on the inside. So I know that this circle is going to be smaller than what my die cut ring is. That's because I want the opening to look like this. I don't want you to see that perfect circle of the opening that is the magic iris. So you can see how that works. Now for the third one that's gonna go in the middle, I'm tracing that inner circle just as a guide. And then I'm going to lay the big one on there and trace it as well. And then I'm going to draw one in between. So somewhere in between those two wavy circles, I'm going to draw one, and then that is what this one's going to get cut out. So we basically have three sizes of openings, a large, a medium, and a small, and those are going to layer together to create our grass yard. Now that all these are cut out, I'm just going to go and erase all my pencil lines. So you can see how these are going to layer together here. And once I layered them together, I decided that that part at the top needed to be cut a little bit deeper. It was a little too close to the one behind it. So I'm just gonna sketch that in and trim that out with my scissors. So this is bigger than our iris. So I need to cut a little notch at the top for the handle of the iris to stick out. And we're also gonna have to extend that handle out a little bit, but I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. So I'm using the die that cuts the handle to cut a notch in that top right corner of my square. I also need to cut this notch in exactly the same place on the other two squares. So I'm going to layer the one I just cut over top, slide that die in to where it butts up against the cut I just made, hold it in place and slide this out and then I'll just put my tape down and this will cut that notch in the exact same place. I'll also repeat this with the back piece. So now that all those notches are cut, you can see when I layer them back together that my notch is cut out in all three. Now it's time to do some inking on these pieces. So the way I see it, it'll be lighter at the top, which is where the smallest hole is, closest to the light source, and darker at the bottom. So I decided to go in with some Distress Oxides in a couple different colors and ink the edges just to give it some more interest and some more depth. So I use the cracked pistachio on the smallest opening. I'm using the peacock feathers on the medium one. So it's a little bit darker than the cracked pistachio. And I'm just going around. I'm not making it completely even. I still want to see that gray through there. And then I'm going to use wilted violet on the largest opening because it's a little bit darker. So I'm being very uneven with this on purpose. And I use colors because I just thought it'd be look like the colors are reflecting through the water and reflecting off onto the walls of the grotto. Now to darken up this topmost layer a little bit because it's going to be closest to the ground where there's the least light, I'm using some black soot and I'm just adding that around to the edges. So it really defines it, makes it look more like rocks. So now to put my pieces together. I am using the thin foam squares. So I put a whole bunch all over this front piece. I'm going to layer that onto the middle piece. Then I'm going to put a whole bunch on the back of this one and layer that to my smallest piece. So this will give it a little bit of depth, but since I'm using the thin foam squares, it's not going to be too much. Because remember, there's also going to be some height from the iris that's going to be behind all this. 
So this would be a very thick card if I use the regular thickness of the foam squares. But this will also give me a little bit of a shadow and it will also give me a space to take all those elements that I colored earlier and tuck them behind. So now that I have these pieces layered together, I can work on putting my iris, but I'm going to need to extend that handle out like I said before. I've cut two of the handles from some Rainforest cardstock and I'm going to trim off the piece with the little arch, the little curved area. You're not going to see any of this, but I'm basically going to sandwich one of these on each side of this handle. So I'm putting some liquid glue on the back side first. I'm just going to layer that on top, making sure the edges are lined up. Then I can flip it over, put some liquid glue on the other side, and sandwich the second one over top. So this is going to make a longer handle, but since there's two pieces here sandwiched together, it's going to be a little more sturdy, which you kind of want as you make it longer like but it still works just perfectly. And now it's long enough that it's going to stick out the corner when we get that middle part lined up. So now the fun part to decorate it with all these fun pieces. So I haven't assembled my iris just yet. I thought I would work on putting all the pieces together before I glue it to a card. So I'm just using liquid glue to glue all these down and I'm putting my main elements in there first, the things that I know that I need. So the mermaid, Sebastian the crab, flounder the fish, and I felt like you also really need that treasure chest to kind of ground it there in the front with some large elements. Then I can start in with a bunch of the smaller elements and work my way around tucking it in these little shelves that I've made. So the other way that I'm working is I'm kind of doing the big pieces that I know I want in there, like the anchor and the jars. I'm also working around trying to vary where they're at and vary the colors as well. So make sure that the reds that I have are distributed evenly on the scene or the blues or the greens. I'm going to make sure the books are on two different sides, not too close together. I put the music there, so it's kind of near Sebastian because that's kind of his thing, right? He is the musician. You can see I'm adding that pink coral at the top, and now I've kind of made three, like a triangle of those red colors. I'm taking the little seaweeds, just adding them in wherever they seem to fit. I like overlapping some of these pieces into the opening in the middle. It just really adds more depth to the whole thing. And you can see I've picked up some pieces to see where they fit. And I'm not going to use all these. They don't, they don't fit everywhere. So I have way more pieces than I'm actually going to use. I'm adding that little starfish right in the corner to kind of balance it out. Now to add the iris, I'm going to use some liquid glue and you can put that all over on this front side. And I'm using the liquid glue so that I can kind of line it up on the back where I can see things. But then I can flip it over and adjust it if I need to. So a little wiggle room. So now for my card base, I have a piece of spiffy speckles in that teal color. And I've just cut it down to fit on this card base. This card base is 4 and 3 quarters by 4 and 3 quarters. So just slightly bigger than that stitch square that I use to create the grotto. So it's going to create a little bit of a border and this is also going to be the background you see when the iris is open. So I've used the little arrow that you cut out when you cut the little cover for the handle. I'm just using the arrow instead of the actual cover because this is a little longer. And I'm going to go in with a glitter pin and add some glittery accents to her tail and the coins into that arrow as well. So now for the sentiment that goes in the center, I'm using the Offset Sayings Birthday Set. And I'm going to line it up in my Misty and put these stamps in the center. So I do not have this glued down to the card base just yet. I'm going to stamp it first. But I'm using this as a guide to line up my stamps. 
So it's going to say sending smiles your way. So once I kind of know where it's going to be, I just remove that so that I've got room to get my fingers in there and line things up and make sure they're straight. So once I've got it in place, I'm just going to double check that it is where I want it to be. I'm going to close that misty door and pick those stamps up. And then I'm just going to stamp this in a nice crisp black ink. I'm not going to use the offset sayings part. I'm going to leave it to where the smiles is the open letters. I just kind of like that look. So I'm going to add a couple of these little teeny tiny fish. This is from the Mermaid for You stamp set. I've just cut out a couple. They're so very small. But I'm going to add them to the moving part of the Magic Iris Mechanism. And when it opens, they're just going to look like they kind of swim out of the way. And then you'll see the sentiment in the center. So that was just me checking that they're not going to get caught on anything. And I put them in the direction of kind of the way it moves, so they don't look like they're swimming backwards, at least. So they'll just move out of the way when the iris opens. So I just think that's a nice added effect. So I'm adding foam squares to the back of this panel, making sure that it's only along the sides where I don't have the mechanism handle that moves. So I can only go from corner to corner. There won't be any foam squares in that middle piece. I'm also going to add some adhesive just to the connectors of the iris so that it's held in the center. You don't want to put any adhesive on any other part of the iris so that it's sure that it can still move. And then I'm going to open it up when I place it on the card base so that I can see my sentiment through that hole and make sure things are lined up nicely. And how fun is that? Those little fish just swim right out of the way. So here's a closer look at some things. It's very full, but it's very fun. I am so excited about this card. It totally turned out the way it was in my head, and I just love it when that happens. So here's a couple another looks at that card. It's so happy and fun and just a different way to look at the magic iris. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.